Former Interior Minister William K. Abua has been appointed the new National Security Advisor by President John Dramani Mahama. He takes over from retired Brigadier General Joseph Nunumenta, whose status <coughs> came into question about a month ago as to whether he was still the National Security Advisor. At the time, Information and Media Relations Minister Mahama Yariga could not confirm or deny if Nunumenta was still the National Security Advisor. The issue came up following a tirade by Nunumenta against striking public officials. William Abwa, a retired commissioner of police, once headed the Police Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service. He has also served as Director General of the Ghana Immigration Service. The President has meanwhile reassigned Brigadier General Nunumenta to head the Human Security Department of the National Security Council Secretariat. So we have some comments on the subject, and this one from uh, Mohammed Abubakar Motsada, and he says, uh, "Isn't it normal for changes to be made? Uh, it is about time this is done." Uh, we also have this one from uh, Mi Udai Asakroja, who says, "The kitchen just got hotter. All it needed were hurts and hands, not mouth. Mouth. It's politics, not military. Maximum commitment and selflessness um, has different meaning in the books of politics. Go and help Tobinko. And those are the comments at least we'll have for now. We'll have to continue with the news. And... Uh, Still on new appointment, Chief Executive of the Food and Drugs Authority, Dr. Stephen K. Opuni, has been moved to the Ghana Cocoa Board. As its new Chief Executive, he replaces Anthony Fofier, who commences his leave prior to the expiration of the contract, the contract at the end of this year. Dr. Opuni's removal comes just three days after a prayer session was organized by the workers of the embattled pharmaceutical company, Tobinko. We we'll have to go to Kumasi, where the legal battle between the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly and Freco FD Limited, a private company contracted in 2002 to manage the Kijiti market, begins today. The KMA is accusing Freco FD for shortchanging the assembly over the years by failing to declare actual revenue accrued from its operations at the lorry terminal and further leaving the place in a mess. Well, the news team's Erastos Asaridonko has been following the issue for some time now and joins us on the line to throw more light on the subject. A very good morning to you, Erastos. Good morning, Roland. Okay. How long has this issue been pending in court? As we've been told, the matter is before the courts. Well, if you uh, realize, some processes have been filed uh, in the Kumase High Court. Uh, first, uh, the woman, I mean the managers of uh, Frico FD Limited, when uh, KMA took over the KGTR terminal, uh, she sought some interventions and uh, she got an injunction to be placed on the assembly and that the court ordered mm. that the KMA should restore management back to her. And uh, this did not happen because the KMA says it has also filed some legal processes, uh, a stay of execution, of that injunction and a motion to set it aside. That case will be heard uh, today. And then the uh, woman also filed uh, a suit, a uh, contempt of court suit against the KMA and said that that case will be heard on the 11th of this month. Mm -hmm. And so today the legal battle begins and after today we'll be uh, seeing who actually, whether the court will up uphold uh, that KMA leaves the terminal immediately or it will set aside the interim injunction that it, it gave uh, the woman some few days ago. Mm. But if you realize the General Assembly 
of mm. the Kumasi Metropolitan uh, Assembly uh, has endorsed uh, the takeover of the KGPR terminal. It was as a result of recommendations by a 12-member committee set up to review all contracts entered into uh, by the Assembly. So we see how that inured uh, to the benefit or otherwise of the KMA's case in court today. But uh, more specifically on the subject, as a reporter who has been following this very case, um, w w what has both sides been saying and what do you deduce from what their own thoughts are on the subject or their very positions? In fact, a whole lot of interesting uh, developments came up. Uh, when the KMA took over the terminal about three weeks ago, mm. um, the, the, the woman that people have the uh, was not too happy, and so they also went for that injunction. And the next day, the uh, staff of mm. Frico came over there to take it over, but uh, the military and the police will not allow that. Mm. And I spoke with the lawyers of KMA. They said they have also filed some processes. Then uh, the woman filed a contempt of court uh, a suit, and she said she wanted to serve uh, the mayor with it, but then the bailiff was not being allowed. That was her claim. And so uh, they went for a substituted uh, sentence uh, of contempt and pasted it on the walls of the assembly. And so that case is also pending and mm. it will be heard. But the woman still believes that the Lord has not taken a stand on this and that the KMA seems to be bulldozing mm. his way uh, into managing the terminal, and that even if he, he wants to manage the terminal or abrogate the contract mm. uh, based on a breach of uh, the agreement, this is not how it should be done. And so uh, there are a whole lot of interesting development. The KMA also thinks that uh, revenue accruing mm. uh, has not been declared properly by the woman, and so uh, it, it is taking that stand mm. to save a state asset. Mm. Well, um, just in a short sentence, uh, we've had some comments politically. Do you read politics in all this? I don't really read politics <laughs> all right, uh, all into right. this. Uh, I don't. <laughs> okay, let, let me not just take you far. And we've been speaking to correspondent in Kumasi, Erastos Asaridonko. Moving on to fuel prices. Now, the National Petroleum Authority has revised up for the prices of petroleum products with effect from Sunday, December 1st, 2013. The price of petrol has been increased by over 3%. It sells at 219.00 per West per litre. Liquefied petroleum gas LPG saw highest increase over 11%, and kerosene is also gone up by 10.99%. The current ex pump price for Ghana gas is 222 per Swiss per litre. The new price will now be 226 per Swiss per litre. Premix fuel, however, saw no change in prices. It was still sell, it was still sell at 116.00 per Swiss per litre. We'll turn our attention to some politics and the UK branch of the New Patriotic Party are calling for Nana Dudankwe Kufado to remain the party's flag bearer for the 2016 presidential and parliamentary elections. Amidst chance of no Nana, no vote, the party faithful in the UK made their feelings known when Nanado attended their general meeting over the weekend. Special pleas were made by the group to Nana Dudankwe Kufado for him to reconsider his decision to postpone the announcement of his intention on whether to remain in frontline politics or take a backstage position in the party until he <coughs> returned to Ghana. Nana Kufado expressed his appreciation but indicated in the last six years he had not had a break from politics and therefore felt the need for a break after the 2012 presidential election petition. Well, uh, here in Accra, three suspected armed robbers were last night shot and killed at its cantonment by the police. DSP Freeman Tete, um, he's the head of uh, public relations of the Accra region of the Ghana Police Service. He is on the line and we'll be speaking to him on the subject and uh, we'd we'll like to know what really um, happened and what efforts the police have made to try to... 
um, restore calm in the community. Now, before we do that, though, um, we'd have to look at some of the subjects. When we get to DSP Freeman Titi on the line, we'll get to speak to him. Still on other news, receiving punishment or um, paying for a crime you have committed is pretty acceptable. But what is unacceptable and unthinkable is paying for a misdeed you know nothing about and had no hand in. Traditional religious shrines take young virgin girls in payments for services to their appease gods for alleged misdeeds of a family member. This practice is common among the ever tribe in Ghana, Togo and Fon people in Benin. As um, outstanding as it may sound, the practice is still undertaken today. Little Angela is a victim of fetish slavery, Komla, adolescent, and uh, to her story, and uh, she says with us for some more. Angela is a 13-year-old JHS1 pupil of Adaklu Voje LAJHS, located in the Adaklu district of the Volta region. For several months, she has been a slave to a shrine in Kliko, in the Ketu South district of the Volta region, initiating her into lifelong servitude called trocosy. Trocosy involves forced sexual intercourse with fetish priests and fetish elders. Her story might sound beyond belief, but this is the truth of the matter, not with Angela alone, but with dozens of other innocent young girls whose stories are hidden from the public. When we first met Angela, she appeared traumatized, timid, dejected, and in captivity. Unlike other classmates, Angela is not cheerful in school. Although Angela lived all her life with her mother in the Adaklu district, she now belongs to a shrine in the Ketu South district, serving punishment for an alleged misdeed of a family member. This is how hard. Well, we'll have to go back to that story we were telli telling you early on about three suspected armed robbers who were gunned down last night at East Cantonment here in Accra. We have on the line head of public relations, Accra region of the Ghana Police Service, DSP Freeman Tete. A very good morning to you, Mr. Tete. Good morning, my uh, brother. Um, can you uh, give us an update on the latest shooting as uh, per the report we have um, as it occurred between the police and the suspected armed robbers at East Cantonment? Yes, um, once again, good morning. Yesterday, around um, almost 8 o'clock, we, we, based on earlier information that the police had, uh, the Accra Regional Police Command dispatched a group of uh, personnel operation team to a residence of uh, to a particular house uh, at East Cantonment. And upon reaching there, uh, they were confronted by this uh, robbers, four in number, so in a shootout. Uh, three of them were gunned down and then one managed to escape. Mm. Uh, it's Christmas, so they obviously they want to tell the police or the police to see how ready we are. Mm. So we just want to assure the public that the police are ready mm. to secure the country for the Christmas. Mm. Well, what should be the caution that uh, the public need to be taking, especially as we approach the youth tide? We, we are talking about alertness. We are talking about being conscious of the environment. We are talking about basic security tips. Mm. All those, and also providing timely information to the police. Mm. But our work is an intelligent gathering work. Mm. With adequate information mm. and exact information, we will be able to move on. But this one was actually a successful operation. Even though we wish this young man could have been alive to assist us to probe deeper. But unfortunately, they've gone. But at the end of the day, we we'll achieve a result by riding the country of a section of robbers. But unfortunately, they are fairly young who could have been productive, but, uh, but they've taken to a, a trade which is unacceptable, which is contrary to the laws of this country. Mm -hmm. And before we let you go, um, we see that, and it has also been announced by the service, that there's police visibility in communities, and we get to see a lot more uh, police personnel stationed across neighborhoods. How has that helped you in at least not cabin, but at least uh, nibbing crime in the back? Yes, people are now having confidence in the police. The police are now closer to the public. <laughs> they are accessible, they are visible. Mm -hmm. So with this you can easily pass on information to them, and immediate action will be taken. So that is actually the concept of police disability. Policing is not an indoor thing. It's actually an outdoor activity. Mm. We only ask that the public cooperate with the visibility team, 
we ask for information, we ask for the needed assistance for them. Uh, there is also an innovation because we've realized that uh, motorbikes are often used to smash bikes and also attack people. So the police have also injected a motorbike patrol in the system. Each district in Accra and also the other regional capitals have been taxed to secure motorbikes for personnel to patrol around. So that in an event of ch chancing upon anyone who is using motorbike to commit an offense, we can easily pursue them because the vehicles are not helping. When we confronted this young guy from motorbike, we are committing crime all over. Well, thank you very much, and um, we wish you all the best as you help protect the public and rid um, the city of any crime. Well, we've been speaking to DSP Freeman Tete. He's uh, the head of the Public Relations Department of the Ghana Police Service Accra Region. Okay, that's it for the news. We'll take the headlines again. Brigadier General Joseph Nenumensa retired, removed from his position as National Security Advisor. Fuel prices have gone up by some 3%. And last night, three suspected armed robbers were gunned down at the East Cantonment. And uh, yes, we were joined by DS Kofi Sapon. You told us about that. I said DS Kofi Sapon. <laughs> <laughs> Free man today. <laughs> you like a lot of his songs. Yes, right? I love it. Okay, I love so it. please get interactive. I see many of you have uh, been giving us loads of messages. Uh, would want a lot of those messages to be streaming in through the social network pages we have made available for you, not only on Facebook, because on Facebook we have joined news on TV and we have our personal handles as well in a short go. Yes, so up next is sports. You stay on. Go we'll right back.